today we are going to create our very own mood boards. I'm going to now show you this image here. We're going to look at the fruit illustration from the book The Rule of Summer. We are going to look at how it makes us feel, the different colours used, how the artist Sean Tan has used paint, oil pastels, colours to create all of his illustrations. So, what is a mood board? I know a few of you have made them before with me, but a mood board simply is all of our ideas, our inspiration, and our initial thoughts of looking at different images. So our first thing to do is stick in the subject. The subject is Sean Tan's illustrations. So this is going to be our primary image, and we're going to focus on the fruit picture, but also, in the book, there is some other images which help us see what medium the artist has used. And also, to look at if there's a hidden meaning behind any of the pictures. Okay, do they show reality? Or how do they make us feel and what is different about them? I am going to stick this picture in the middle. Looking at these images, what emotions, what feelings do they bring up? When I look at them, I notice, can you see here how you've got these two small characters? Look at the size of them compared to the fruit in the background and this huge slice of cake. And we know these images are not very realistic because of the size of them. So our first experiment is how do we feel about them? I've got some nice words which explain how they make me feel. And obviously you might think of some different words which is absolutely fine. So I've got my sheet here with all these descriptive words on. You might look at them and feel like it's like magic. How can a huge piece of cake be bigger than a little boy? You might think that it looks like the future. Could it be in a upside down world? Almost like a video game? Or a dream situation? Because in our dreams, anything is possible. Okay, so what I want us to do is select, it can be some of these words as an image. And we we're going to stick them and collage them onto our page. You might have thought of some different words, okay? Because I know you have looked at this book last week. So some descriptive words could be, does it make you feel almost disconnected from reality? Are they quite bizarre? The future, how can this even be possible? So I want us to start to brainstorm some of these ideas. You can cut out some words, you can write them with your pen or pencil and start to mind map onto your page. So I am going to cut out my first word. So looking at this, to me it looks like a dream scenario, a dream situation. And I quite like this illustration here. And um, we can be a bit creative with it. I am cutting the image out in a wavy sort of pattern. There we go. And I also like this image here of the hand in the distance. Okay, so it all represents the future of our imagination. So again, I am cutting this out very carefully. So I want us to pick two images and stick them in like so. Put this one here and then I'm going to put a descriptive word above that one. And my dream I'm going to make into a thought bubble. So the dream is appearing to come out of this fruit illustration here. And I quite like the idea 
of the future. Actually, when I first looked at this image, it reminded me of who remembers the book The Hungry Caterpillar. Do you remember when he went through on the first day he ate, on the second day he ate, and the style of it, what medium the artist used, is quite similar. So the artist in that book and this book are quite similar because, to me, it reminds me and it brings up familiar memories. So that moves us on to our next experiment. In this experiment, we are going to look through these images of still life by a different artist called Van Gogh. So we've got these two images here and another four. And we can see that they are all fruit. So still life basically means everyday common objects. They can be natural like fruit, flowers, or they can be a bit more man-made like books, vases, coins, etc. But there's a similarity, okay, if I move these out of the way, and we remember referring everything back to this main fruit image by Sean Tam. We are making a comparison to the artist Van Gogh, and in this experiment, I want us to look at the subject, which is the fruit, and pick one which appeals the most to us. And we're going to stick that onto our mood board. So let me have a look. I'm going to look at the colour. I'm going to look at how many objects are in the picture. And I am going to select this one. Remember, you can select your own individual picture. So, I'm now going to cut out this image here. And it's really important to write our notes next to it. Because although I remember why I picked it now, we need to go back to our mood board to inspire us so this is my image by Van Gogh, and if I put it right next to the picture, you can see it is quite similar. So I'm going to find some space on my page, and your images can overlap, so be a little bit creative with your mood board. You want it to jump out, you want it to be quite appealing. I'm going to stick this picture nearish to Sean Tan. And I'm going to write some notes. So this one is by Van Gogh. And it's still life. Because it is a picture of fruit. And we are going to label this one Sean Tan. So our next set of images look at surrealist fruit. And I'm just going to space them out a little bit so you should get this pack of images out now. And you can see they are really different. All of them have got some element of a recognisable fruit into them. But I want you to really, really look at them and think what makes it different to the orange I am holding. This orange in my hand fits into my hand. Look at the size of this orange. It's pretty normal. The texture on it is pretty normal. And the size and shape of my hand is average. So we look at these pictures and it links to our subject matter which is the fruit but I notice they are quite unusual I really like this one because I can immediately recognize it's an apple cut into half but 
it's got the shape of a butterfly. And when we think about that, that can't actually happen. So surrealist is almost like imaginative play. It is having fun and being creative with different images. So again, this one looks at the scale. You don't have a giant cherry on top of a tree. And here you've got two different fruits combined. So surrealism is quite playful. You can imagine what you would like and it is an art movement, okay, and it is linked at looking at our unconscious, which means exploring dreams, exploring fantasy. And that's why they are so strange, but I find them really appealing. So looking at, again, all this surrealist fruit, I want us to select one which appeals to us, which we quite enjoy. It could be playful. It can be interesting. And I want us to cut it out and collage it onto our mood board. I am going to pick this apple butterfly but again there's lots to choose from and I want you to pick one what suits you and remember it all links back to this central image here so I'm going to cut this image out but I'm going to cut it I think all the way around here So we're going to select our inspirational images and put them onto our page. So I'm going to glue it into position. And what do you notice? I'll ask you a question now. It's the same. What do you notice is the same about these images? And what do you notice is different? So I want you to annotate that, so write some notes on your mood board. I'm going to describe what mine is. So, an apple, and half. And what I noticed, because it is an apple, we've got recognisable apples in our picture here. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got these small characters here and these huge pieces of fruit. So it makes it unusual, bizarre, that the fruit and the children in the picture are so different. So the proportion, we've got the really small children and the really big fruit. Here we've got two images combined into one. So we've got the apple, and the butterfly. So which do you see first out of interest? We're now going to move on and look at colour. So I've got an enlarged picture here just to make it easier for you. So that's my central image on my mood board. And we are going to focus on colour. What can we see? Are the colours bright and primary colours? Are they dull? Are they monochrome, which is only using black and white? Are they natural? So I've got some colouring pencils and we are going to explore the colour palette. So I'm going to match up some colours. I can see some different greens. We've got a dark green, almost a lime green. Some yellow, really bright, vibrant primary red, some oranges, brown, and a peach. So 
on our mood board we are going to experiment with colour and we are going to solidly shade in some colour. So we've got this lovely red here and the red depending on how light it is goes into orange we've got brown but the brown is used to create different shadows We've got some lovely greens and I am just shading in any available space I have but you can do it like I've done it, you can create circles your circles can overlap or they could be a geometric square shape like so so when we look at colour we've recognised we can see all of these colours within this image. Now we are going to look at the images a bit more closely. Have a look at the fruit here and if you've chosen this picture of the fruit here, look at the brush strokes. So you need to look and observe really closely at your images and you can see that the brush strokes are quite thick, they're quite layered. And this is to build up the different texture in the images. So you've got this dark green here, you've got parts of highlights which show the yellows and the white. And it is a stylized image and we are going to practice with different brush strokes. We're going to just use pencil and colouring pencil in our mood board and later on we are going to look at using acrylic paint. So looking at the space left on the mood board, some space here, I am going to use my pencil in one direction. So as I start to do repeated lines on my page and then I am going to change them, change the direction like so. So here these horizontal lines is called hatching and as I've crossed over it's called cross hatching. But we're going to explore that in our next Lesson. So be a bit creative, have a look at the fruit and see if you can copy and experiment and practice using your pencil and the colouring pencils in the same style. I'm going to do it slightly curvier now. So I am So the closer my lines are together, the darker the colour appears and the same repeated strokes but further away, the lighter it appears. So let's try this using my red pencil and the brown pencil. So first of all, I am making spirals 
I'm pushing quite hard with my pencil. And I'm experimenting, I'm trying to almost mimic and create something similar to this. Whatever you do, you just need to repeat all of them strokes. This time I've gone in different directions, like so. So using my red, we can look at the pressure. The harder I push, the darker it is. And then I'm going to gradually reduce the pressure. So it's going to have less pressure on the page. So it should be easier and easier as you move along until we go from the red to white. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the orange pencil. And repeated strokes up and down, hard as I can. And as I move along my page, I am putting less and less and less pressure. So the less pressure applied, the lighter the colour will be. So that's all in the same direction. I'm going to try and do it in different directions now. So you can see all of these lovely brush strokes. It's quite sketchy. I'm using that orange first. There we go. Finally, have a look all the way through your packs of images. Now, to make your mood board really come alive, add some extra images. So here you can see I've added another example of the Van Gogh still life and I really, really like all of these lovely, bold, bright, harsh strokes. And at the bottom here, I've added another picture, another piece of art linked to Sean Tam. So you can see the three different images by him. To make it a bit more obvious to someone who is looking at the mood board for the first time, I've highlighted the main title, our artist Sean Tan, and our secondary artist Van Gogh, all in pink. So it makes it all linked together. And then finally, I have just experimented with more and more different brush strokes and adding in some block colour at the top. To add texture to a mood board you can add in different wallpaper, materials and all sorts. I found some buttons, can you see here? Right at the top of my mood board I've added in some yellow buttons. And the reason behind this is because it links into the shape of all the different types of fruits, the circular, the sphere shape, and the colour. The colour stands out quite a lot in all of these images here.